Welcome back. So far in the course, except for the very, very last material when we learned Z and E, you had seen other elements, but you actually not used the elements to construct structures in order to determine double bonds. It was already given to you. So actually you could do Z and E without having this knowledge I'm gonna tell you now because the knowledge you needed to do Z and E is different. But what I want you to know from now is slightly different, okay? Where you are actually going to use um, the elements to come up with a few things, okay? I'm gonna say a few things because the possibilities are endless. I'm gonna restrict myself just to a few so that you know I'm not overloading you with everything I know or everything that's not needed, okay? So what I'm really trying to get away here is what if you have an alkene? I would say probably, um, I would say let's not, alkynes, the reason I say that it, it'll make sense, with halogens or oxygen or nitrogen, okay? Okay, let's practice, okay? Determine the number of double bonds and write at least two to three isomers for the following compound. I might spend a little bit more time on this particular video because that way I can keep the rest of the video's times very quick. All right, now if you remember, you do need that foundation knowledge on how to get double bonds, but you have to have that slight bit of twitch to it and so what if your compound used to contain only carbon and hydrogen, but now you have an halogen? Now halogens can be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. All of them would be fall under the group of halogens. So the rule will not change between if you have one of these four, okay? So now how do we first go about determining the number of double bonds? All you have to do is first write the general formula for an alkane. That's what you do. And this is the number of carbons that's in the given compound, right? So if you put that in the expression, you're going to get C5H12, right? So this, we're gonna call this the original, just like how we did for the other one. And then if you have a halogen, what do you have to do is add one hydrogen to the existing compound. So what I'm saying here is if it is a halogen, okay, if a halogen is present, Okay, all you do is this we got from the formula. Okay, you add one hydrogen to the formula that's given. Okay, what I mean by that is you do not no longer need the fluorine. So I'm going to take the C5H11 plus one hydrogen added. If it's an halogen, you had one hydrogen. So you end with C5H12, and we're gonna call this given, okay? Now take the original, which we got from determining from the formulae, minus the given, which means you end up with zero, divided by two is zero double bonds, which makes sense because halogens, when they're in a compound, if it's only carbon, hydrogen, and a halogen, you will not have a single bond. And I also have a rule here. Halogens can connect to any element only through a single bond. What I mean by that is what I'm trying to get out of by writing two to three different isomers. Okay, so we have five carbons. So write five, okay? Now, as I said, halogens can only connect to any element through a single bond. So I'm gonna put the fluorine here that's one isomer. And then I guess you can write five more and write over here. That's number third isomer. Again, none of that what you learned earlier is any different. It's still the same. Okay. We will not get into naming for this yet. We will do that for another video, another session on functional group nomenclature. Now let's go ahead and fill the rest with hydrogens. And if you see, you will only have 11 hydrogens because that's what you're starting with. Now, if you don't do this math, you cannot really ever determine how to go about and you cannot have too many double bonds or too little or none or 
you know, any of those combinations, right? See, I'm talking as I'm doing this because I'm comfortable doing this. I want you to be as comfortable as I am talking and doing something. So the takeaway message is this area. Typically, when you have only carbon, hydrogen, sorry, carbon, hydrogen, and the halogen, okay, this logic is what you use. So you first take the number of carbons from the given molecule, put it in the formulae for an alkane, get the original formulae. If it is a halogen, you have to add one hydrogen to the existing to get into the given formula. Subtract the original and the given to just like how you do for an alkane or alkene or alkyne calculation, divide by two to get the double bond. Now, the important thing here is only. The key here is only. What that means is, Halogens can connect to any element only through a single bond. It doesn't matter whether it's carbon, hydrogen, any element. Halogen itself can only connect through a single bond, which is evident that in all three isomers, fluorine is only attached to the carbon through a single bond. Okay, so if you were to draw the line structure, one, two, three, four, five, right? That's five carbons, and the fluorine is in the end, right? Or for this one, you can draw, I'm sorry. This is your five carbons, right? And then we're putting it in the second. So this is where the fluorine is. And for this one, two, three, four, five, the fluorine is. Now, make sure that you put the number, of, that's why I taught you with the number of dots. If you don't put the dots, what you end up doing here is this. That's adding extra carbon. Because people see this bond has it, somehow they see it as a, another carbon, so this is wrong. Which is why I taught you to use the number of carbons. Once the dot ends, if the fluorine is at the end, just attach to the dot. If it's anywhere else in the middle, it's easier. So just pay a little extra attention for the star area. I'm gonna put star on areas that require more attention, all right? Now that's if carbon, hydrogen, and halogen. I'm gonna stop here, and I'll make one video for oxygen, or one more video for nitrogen, and that's very, very foundational, okay? If you don't understand this, you will have a lot more problem coming up with <coughs> structures, okay? So stay tuned.